Hello everyone, my name is Zedrin, the animation director behind Silly Philly Studios, and this is a Flash tutorial. Yay. So, this is basically something that has been funded by our Patreon supporters, and if you want to see more videos like this one, you can head over to our Patreon. Uh, we have a link in the description, and you can support us. Uh, we have these set up as milestone goals. Uh, another note on the Patreon, we've also changed it to monthly pledges as well to make it a little bit more predictable, and we were already on a roughly monthly schedule anyway. Anyway, to get into this tutorial, this is going to assume that you know next to nothing about Flash, so this is going to be fairly bare bones. So I'm going to go over stuff like tools, uh, animation methods, hotkeys, basic et etymology, etc. So when you make a Flash animation, the thing you're going to mostly use is going to be Action Script 3. Uh, only use the other things if you actually know what they do. Now your interface will probably look something like this, probably a bit different. Um, you can have your timeline on the top, bottom, it doesn't matter. But the most important things that you have are the stage, the timeline, the properties panel, the library, and the toolbar. Everything else is kind of an accessory. Starting with the properties panel, you usually want to go here before you even start animating. If you click the um, wrench button, you can actually go into edit the defaults. But uh, you usually want to animate at 24 frames per second. Less than that, you'll notice it, and more than that, it's too much work. And you also usually want to animate at some 16 by 9 resolution. I usually do 70, 720 by 1280, and then I scale that up to 1080p using Zwivel. Anyway, if you haven't figured it out yet, the most important aspect about Flash and animation in general is going to be the timeline. This basically is where all your animation data is stored. You'll notice that there's only one layer at the moment. You can actually have as many layers as you want. I've had character animations that have 64 frames, or not 64 frames, 64 layers on just a single character and then I compress that into a single symbol so that way it only looks like one. But anyway, this little thing that I'm petting with my mouse over here is called a keyframe. This is basically where the animation data goes. Each keyframe will have, can have unique animation data. And now watch as I put some magic brush work on the stage and suddenly it makes the keyframe no longer blink. Now you can see it has stuff inside there, so just memorize what that looks like. All right, now to just get started, there's four hotkeys I wanna go over. Uh, B is the brush tool, obviously. And then the other hotkeys, you're going to use these a lot more. It'd be a lot easier to just memorize these hotkeys. F5, F6, F7, and F8. F5 is used to extend the current keyframe. This carries out the same data, so that way it just stays consistent throughout the entire span of these keyframes. F6 will make a new keyframe based on the previous data. So, if you notice, when I make a new keyframe here, suddenly I can add in more data. And when I go to the previous keyframe, it looks the same. When I go to the new one, it looks the same, but it has something else in it. And then the last one, F7, will make a new blank keyframe, which then you can fill in however the hell you want. And that's kind of the basics of frame-by-frame -frame animation. Congratulations! Alright, so that's about all you need to know for timeline hotkeys. Now, time for another hotkey, F8. F8 is something called Create New Symbol. Symbols are pretty much everything in Flash. Um, you don't use them as much in frame-by-frame, -frame, but for puppeted animation, twinned animation, most other kinds of animation, as well as games and stuff, you will use a lot of symbols. So anyway, I'm going to draw this object here, and then I'm going to select it using either V or Q, um, the selection and transform tools respectively, and I'm going to press F8. And as you notice, I can basically turn it into a symbol. Now the cool thing about symbols is that they are consistent throughout the animation. If you have a symbol that occurs at several different spots in an animation, such as you've pulled it out from the library, and then you go and make a change to that symbol, that change will exist in every single instance that occurs in your animation, because it's the same object. And if you double-click a symbol, you can actually go inside it, and look, it has its own timeline! So you can fill it with even more animation and stuff, and it takes forever! Now watch as this unassuming squiggle turns into a goddamn Yoshi egg. Oh yeah, by the way, if you haven't noticed yet, the brush tool sucks ass. So, um, you just kinda gotta live with it. You can work around it by playing with the smoothing and stuff, or tweaking it. Just keep in mind that Flash is all vector-based. On that note, if you actually know how to vector and stuff using Inkscape or Illustrator, you can actually import your vectors in there. Please do that instead, you'll have a lot nicer of a time. Otherwise, if you want to use the brush tool, you can try changing like brush size and stuff, or smoothing, and you're just going to have to figure it out yourself. And while I'm on that topic, let me actually just mention, as I said, Flash is vector-based, so if you've ever dealt with a vector path, it's basically basically it's a shape that's comprised of several paths and strokes. Flash actually does have its own pen tool that sucks ass. And you can also use a subselection tool with A to actually modify existing strokes and stuff. But if you look at the Yoshi egg and stuff, it has paths and stuff that comprise its shape. So you can tweak those around to 
actually optimize your curves and stuff. You can also use Control Shift Alt C to optimize curves that way. It doesn't always work how you want, but it can severely reduce the number of nodes you have to make your animation a little less memory intensive. I don't know. Also, contrary to popular belief, vectoring has nothing to do with tracing, if that wasn't obvious enough already. Believe it or not, the brush tool in Flash actually is a vector tool as well. It just approximates your brush strokes into a vector fill. That's why it looks so crappy whenever you use it. The key difference between like the pen tool and the brush tool, the brush tool just relies on fills, whereas the pen tool and the line tool rely on strokes. Hey, you like to draw in Photoshop or Psy? Go ahead, use the brush tool. I seriously would recommend it. But I would also recommend learning how the pen tool works and learning how to vector a little bit, just so that way you can fix your strokes and stuff, so that way you don't get endlessly frustrated. By the way, I would seriously recommend learning all the hotkeys for Flash and stuff, because they will seriously speed up your animation animating process, which animation takes a long time to begin with, so work efficiently. Um, if you mouse over any of the tools, you can see what their hotkey is, just by holding your mouse over it for a few seconds. And here are also a few of the most basic ones that I use, among others. Just don't try using the bone tool, trust me, it sucks ass. Okay, now the first rule of animating is you gotta know what the hell you want to animate. So for this animation demonstration, I'm gonna animate a bomb exploding. After it bounces. So first things first, we gotta draw our bomb. So here's our bomb. And, oh yeah, just so, I'm gonna take a little aside to just go for some cool things about the brush tool. If you click the brush options, there's five different ways to draw. There's normal fills, there's brush fills only. Which uh, that I believe how that works is that just won't destroy stroke lines. Um, you can paint behind, which is very useful, and you can paint inside, which if you click something as you're drawing, you'll only be able to modify existing strokes or existing fills. And the last one is paint inside selection, which requires you to select something first using B or Q. People who combine these tools very well can actually do some pretty cool art in Flash. And get this, because it's vector-based, you can actually export it at any size you want. Alright, now that we've gotten our bomb drawn, we need to make it into a symbol. And we can name symbols whatever we want, so I'm gonna call this bomb Robert Downey Jr., because he's cool. Alright, so what we want this bomb to do, we, we want Robert Downey Jr. to bounce across the screen. So let's start by just showing you how to make him bounce. And this is gonna get into the next phase in animation, the tweening. Now just a note, tweening, if you don't know how to use it right, it'll wind up looking pretty bad. Tweening already is a shortcut, so use it within reason. Don't overuse it. Um, if you combine it with decent use of frame by frame, you can actually make some pretty nice stuff, but don't get lazy, because tweens can often be very lazy. Anyway, I'm going to choose a starting position, a final position, and also starting position again, and make those three separate tween, or three separate keyframes. And now when I right-click on those keyframes, or those extended frames, whatever you want to call them, I can make a classic tween. Just for the record, don't use motion tweens. Um, or you can use them, but don't use them all that much because they function way different, and they actually have their own layer properties, which can wind up glitching out your animations. And shape tweens are really advanced and totally different from anything else, so you'll have to experiment with those on your own or research them. They basically manipulate one fill and turn it into the next. Anyway, there, now look at that animation, that lovely, crappy, bouncing animation with no semblance of gravity or physics anywhere in, inside. This is what I'm talking about when I say that tweens can be very lazy and look very crappy. You need to know how to manipulate them and how to use them. Now, the way you can add in gravity, just click somewhere on the keyframe, and then if you go to the Properties panel, you'll notice that there's this thing called Ease. Ease basically controls where it favors the motion. If you set it to a negative number, it'll wind up favoring the initial position, and if you set it to a positive number, it'll wind up favoring the latter position. So because we have this thing falling first, we want it to favor the initial position, so we set the first keyframe, or the first tween, to negative 100, because we want it to come to a complete stop. And then we set the latter one to a complete, or a positive 100 because we want it to again come to a complete stop after rapidly bouncing off the ground. Now look, it's bouncing and it actually kind of bounces fairly decently now. Alright, now this tutorial is actually kind of ran on for a while, so I'm going to cut it here and I'm going to have a second video which you can just click right here so you can see that other tutorial. So consider this part one and part two should be right here. Now. 
Just click the link. Click it. You can just click the link. Do it. <laughs>